Could Jeffrey Dahmer be in heaven right now? That is a question that my daughter asked me after watching a video about him receiving Jesus. And once I saw the video, I had to believe that, yeah, he's in heaven. Because what gets us to heaven is not good behavior. What gets us to heaven is the blood of Jesus. Um, there's a scripture in Romans 5. If we look at it, beginning in verse 6, it says, For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Who were the ungodly? Every single one of us. Every single one of us that have been born on earth are the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even die. But God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Right in the midst of our worst mistake, of our worst um, sins, Christ, he died for us to bear it, to take it. That's what he came for. He didn't come to make us good behaving people. He came to make us people redeemed and set right with him set right with God and, and um, people that are able to come into heaven because of his love for us. And so in verse 9 it says, Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, that means his blood is what justifies us, not our good works, not our good behavior. His blood alone justifies us. Much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. The wrath of God is coming into this world. Even now, we're seeing evidence of this world just being the chaos and the unwinding of it all. And, it, it, and everything uh, in human and in our earth and in our atmosphere is just shifting. And we feel the intensity. Even people that don't know God feel the intensity of the heaviness of the darkness coming upon us. Well, this is just the beginning. But there is a way to be covered and not just saved so you can go to heaven, but saved so you can have heaven inside of you right now. There's an actual peace that comes when you just say, everything I've ever done, everything that I've ever sinned against you, Lord, I put it on the cross. I let the atonement, the judgment of what Jesus did take the place. It means that when he died on the cross, that he actually took you with him and you died to all of those sins. And when he got out of that empty tomb, that you're alive with him. It's a beautiful, most beautiful miracle that we so often take for granted. It's like this red blanket. There's a covering for us in the blood of Christ. And 1 John 1, 7 says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, in the light which we all try to hide from. None of us really like to see the truth about ourselves, but we have to see the truth about ourselves. We're either going to see it now or in heaven. If we walk in the light as he is in light, we have fellowship with one another. The beautiful gift that we get is not only Jesus himself, but this true fellowship with him and with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, God's son, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. That means that whoever you were before is completely washed away by the blood of Jesus. And you get to walk in the truth of who you are now, a brand new creation in him into his light and one that has fellowship with him so that it's not just heaven is a place where we go when we die, but heaven, we get to live in um, the Holy Spirit, which is in heaven right now, but also in us. And so we, pr I just pray for us that we would receive this. I pray that we would let whoever we were before die. And like Jeffrey Dahmer, that we will receive the judgment and the justice of God. It doesn't mean that the circumstances that we get into are not going to have to carry through in this world. Like he paid the death penalty for, for what he did, but before he paid the death penalty for what he did, he received the judgment of God, the justice of God, which said, it's either my son that's going to pay for your sin or it's you that's going to pay for your sin. Which do you choose? And that is the choice we each get to make. I know for me, I have had three abortions. And so if Jeffrey Dahmer didn't get into heaven because of his sin, I wouldn't get into heaven because of my sin either. Yet, even that sin, Jesus bore at the cross. And I, there was a time where he said, do you place that sin that you did against me, that great sin that you did against yourself and me, 
did you place that at the cross, Rhonda? And I let him take it. And he washed me clean so that all there is now in my heart is an anxious expectation, a hopeful expectation of not only seeing Jesus, but seeing my three babies in heaven whom he adopted and raised as his own. <clears throat> if we don't get into heaven, then that means Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament, doesn't get into heaven either because he was a murderer of Christians before he became Paul. <laughs> and so all of us, beloved, have something we're ashamed of that, that in our flesh we say, oh, I, I can't go to God with that because that's too bad, or maybe I still want to do that. And so I can't go to God because then he won't let me do that anymore. Right now he's saying, just come. I love you right where you're at. You don't have to clean up your act. You don't have to get it together. You come to Jesus and the job of getting you together, of making you clean and making you righteous is up to him, not you, not me, not anyone but him. Yet through him, you will be able to walk into the newness of life. It doesn't mean you won't fall down like a new baby learning to walk and need lots of help up, but that is the joy of the journey that we know his grace and his blood covers us the whole way home. So I hope this blesses you today that you will get into heaven, not based on your works, but because of what Jesus did at the cross. God bless you. And I just want to pray really quickly. I also want to let you know, I'll put the link to that video below so you can watch the same one that my daughter and I did. Jesus, I pray today for anyone who's struggling with believing that they're not worthy to enter your kingdom, that they would know that none of us are, but you make us worthy by the blood of your cross, by the blood of the lamb who was slain for us, and that our hope is in you and in your righteousness, that you look at us through the blood and you say, that is my child, that you knew before we were ever born that we were never going to be able to get it right. And that sin is a constant accuser of us saying, you can't, you're not, you're not good enough and you're not worthy. But you look at us as children of God to say, I died to make you worthy. I died to let you in. I died to take your eternal punishment. I pray that many come to that saving knowledge of you today. And I pray that they would receive you. And even those of us in the church who still hold ourselves into this um almost like a tabulating system, like I've done good things, so I'm righteous, that we would put that all away and know that none of us are righteous except by the blood of the Lamb, that we would put away any law in our mind that stands against us, and we would instead stand in your perfect grace, your perfect love, your perfect mercy that covers all of our sin. It's in your name, Jesus, I ask these things. Amen. Thank you for letting me share my heart with you today. God bless you.